Hey, my name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you kind of my full gulp setup, what I use right now, kind of in production. And uh, that'll include both uh, SCSS, it'll include uh, Im images, so minifying them and then converting them to WebP, so you've got both, uh, so your website can be a little more performant, and then also minifying JavaScript. So there are some other things we could add to this, but this is kind of the basic setup I use, and uh, I figured I'd share it with you. So there's a few things we need to do first, and that is we need to make sure that you've got uh, Node.js. If you don't have Node.js, you can just go to nodejs.org and install it. Um, and once you've got Node.js installed on your machine, you can just type npm init. What this will do is it'll ask you a bunch of questions. You can either do dash y when you do npm init, or just hit enter like I did through all those. And it will create what's called a package.json file. Now this package.json file essentially is just going to track anything that you need in order to run your gulp script. So it'll be important for us, especially if you are sending this up to some kind of online re uh, repository and then downloading it on a different machine. Rather than tracking all of the node modules you'll need, all you'll have to do is type npm install, and it'll just look in this package.json file, grab everything you need, and drop it on your machine uh, for you. So that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is install Gulp. So we need to do that in two ways. First, you'll install it globally. Now, I've already installed it, so I don't need to install it globally. But even if you have it on your machine, or after you have it on your machine, rather, you do need to actually install it in whatever directory you're working in. So I'll come in here and install it like this. And it's going to do several things. First of all, I'm, you might have noticed that I'm doing dash dash save dev. And we'll do that through most of our things. And what that will do is it will not only add the modules here, but it'll actually add something in your package.json. You see it just populated here, dev dependencies. And what I need is gulp, either 4.0.2 or higher. Um, so again, this is kind of this package.json file will track everything you need to operate your website uh, on a different machine or if you get rid of these node modules somehow. You, know, you may have noticed that we've got lots of stuff in here. And it's quite a bit of data, and we haven't even added all this stuff. If you are, if you have like a, a Git repository that's tied to this, or if you're sending it up online to some Git repository, it's really important to add node underscore modules to your .git ignore file. And uh, all you would do is come in here, and I, I don't have this initialized as a Git repository, but you would come in here and just do .git ignore, and then you'd come in here and say node modules. That way you're not keeping track of everything in and out of this node modules, either in your local repository or certainly not sending it all the way up to the cloud. Again, if you need a, if you need it on a new machine, you don't have Gulp yet installed, and you're trying to run your Gulp file that we're going to write here in a moment, it'll just prompt you to say npm install and download everything you need in this node modules folder. So make sure you add that to your .git ignore. Okay, so we've done the first two steps, and now we need to start installing plugins. Now I'm gonna just install these kind of in groups, but you'll see here I've got a gulp sass, I've got gulp auto prefixer and gulp clean CSS. So as I install these all as dev dependencies, see again that dash dash save dev, I'll tell you what they do. So sass is going to convert it from a CSS down to CSS. The auto prefixer will add support for previous versions and then clean CSS is going to minify it. Uh, I'm not renaming it like I did in my last video on sass just to kind of speed us up a little bit. Next, I'll install what I need for the JavaScript minifier, and it's just one Gulp uh, plugin called Gulp Terser. And then finally, I'll install what I need to both minify and to create WebP versions of all my PNGs and JPEGs. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've initialized to get uh, our a Node.js. We have installed Gulp globally in our local directory, and now we've installed a bunch of plugins and the next thing we need to do is now add a gulp file. Come in here and we can just say new file. And you do need to spell it just like this because this is what gulp is going to look for. Gulpfile.js. And let's go ahead and open this up. And I'll open it up over here just so we can kind of keep track of everything. Let me kind of like, I guess, <laughs> walk through what we're going to do here. Um, number five here. We are going to uh, create some functions. We're going to create a watch task. And then we are going to set a default gulp. But the very first thing we'll do is list our dependencies. 
Essentially what this is telling the Galt files, here's everything you need to run everything below. So the first thing we'll need is Galt itself. And we'll actually just write this out kind of destructured here. Here are the things we're gonna use in Galt itself. So the SRC, the destination, a watch task, and a series. Uh, they'll all require Galt. Now, next what we need to do is list all of the things that all the plugins that we just added. So I'm just going to paste this in, and this will actually, so you don't have to watch me do it all, type it all. Um, all we're doing is creating a variable. We can name it whatever we want, and then saying require, and then doing each of the plugins we just installed. So SAS, auto prefixer, clean CSS, Tercer, that's our JavaScript, Minifier, ImageMin, and WebP. And I'm just naming them whatever I want, but this happens to be what I'm naming them. Okay, um, so once we've listed what we need, now we're going to actually write the functions. We've got several functions to write here. Let's start by uh, doing our one for CSS. So we're going to say function compile uh, SCSS. We can call this whatever we want, but this is what I'm going to call it. And then we'll say return. And what happens in these gulp files is you actually say, hey, I'm going to send you some files. This is the first thing we're doing. Here's the start of the pipe. And I want to send you a file, any file that you can find. And let me go ahead and pull up my directory here in this source directory and in this CSS, SCSS directory. So I'll just come in here and I'll say any file that you can find in source, SCSS, and then we'll just say any file in here that has the extension SCSS. So we're saying, hey, here's the start of the pipe. Then we'll come in here and we'll say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to first run my SAS variable. That's this, which is going to run gulp SAS. Then I want you to run the uh, prefix, and then I want you to run minify. Now, when you're done piping through all of that, I want you to exit the pipe. And here's where we can call this dest um, from our from gulp itself. And here's the destination we want you to pipe it out to. So we want you to send it to dist, which happens to be my dist distribution folder, and we want it to go into the CSS folder. So that's it. That's all we're going to do for uh, minifying the SESS. So let's now add something for JavaScript. This one will even be shorter. So we'll come in here and we'll say function. We'll just call this JSMin. And we'll say return. Here's the start where they should be looking in the SRC folder, JavaScript, and anything with the JavaScript extension. Once again, we'll come in here and we want to pipe it through our Tercer plugin. And then we'll exit the pipe and we'll say dust. And here's where we want it to go. We want it to go to our distribution folder and into our JS folder in there. All right, next we want to come and we want to optimize our images. So this is for the images. And we're going to say function. We're going to create two different ones here. One of them is going to first optimize the image itself. And then the second one will actually come and minify it um, or convert it to WebP. So let's first of all say optimize image. And there's a few things we want to do here. Here's where we're telling it to watch. We want it to watch inside our SRC folder and in the images folder. And it, we want it to grab anything that has one of these two extensions, either a JPEG or a PNG. Then we want to say, OK, let me pull this up some. Here's what we want you to do to those images or the PNGs. We want you to image min those. <laughs> and now this image min is going to actually have some things we can pass into it. Remember, we have two different types of images that might be going in here, either a JPEG or a PNG. So we can come down in here and say image min, and there are some additional kind of uh, parameters you can set on this. We're telling it, hey, use the Moz JPEG, uh, I, I guess a part of your uh, plugin here, and whenever there's a JPEG passed in, we're going to pass some uh, parameters here we want it to, to use on that JPEG. We'll set a quality, and this tells it basically the quality of the image. The lower quality images are going to be smaller, the higher quality images are going to be larger. I don't remember what it defaults to, but 100 is basically full quality, 0 would be so pixelated that it would be worthless. So we'll do something like 80 and then progressive true. Now progressive means that the image will load fuzzily first and then slowly get more clear. 
as opposed to if you don't do a progressive image for JPEG, uh, it'll wait till the whole thing is loaded and then just pop it in all at once. And then we want to say, all right, now we've done that. Here's what we want you to do with PNGs. Once again, same kind of thing. And this one, we're just going to pass in optimization level two. Now, if you have more questions about how these different kind of sections of this plugin work, of this um, image min plugin work, you can go on and just search for gulp image min, and it actually gives you these examples. So um, I'm doing nothing here aside from kind of what's uh, what's already expected. And I do also need to wrap this whole thing in these uh, in this array. So I, I didn't actually include those brackets, which we need to do. All right, now we need to actually exit the pipe. That was a little more involved, but the process is still the exact same. We're going to come back out to our dist folder, and we want to go inside our images folder, inside that dist folder. All right, so now what we've done is we've taken anything that's in our images SRC, we pushed it into this images folder after it's been optimized. Now we want to say, let's watch this folder, and anytime anything gets dropped in here, we want you to actually convert those also to WebP so we can use those uh, as kind of a more modern image format. So let's do WebP images. Here we'll say function, let's just call it WebP image and return. And remember, we're watching now the dist folder. And inside that, we're watching the images. And we're only going to watch, once again, anything with either a JPEG or a PNG extension. What are we going to do? But pipe it. And we'll pipe it through that image WebP plugin. And then we're going to exit the pipe. We're going to put it in the exact same location that we just pulled them from. Because what we want is both JPEGs and WebPs right next to each other in that directory. Okay, so we've written all the functions we need. We've compiled our SCSS. We have a JavaScript minifier. We've optimized our images. Now we've added them as WebPs. Now we could run all of these functions separately every time we add any image. But number one, you're not going to want to remember to do that in the middle of writing code. And number two, it's a lot of work for no reason, because you can create something called a watch task. Now, this watch task is important because it'll basically run your functions for you. So we'll come in here and we'll just write function and we can call it whatever we want, but we'll call it watch task because that's what it's doing. And all we need to do is pass this watch uh, that we're pulling here from Gulp itself. So we'll come in here, and we'll pass watch. And then we're going to say, hey, here's where you should be watching. We'll say, let's first of all do our CSS. So once again, just like up above, we're going to say, watch anything that's in the CSS folder, SCSS folder inside that source folder. And when you see it, you're going to pass this compile SCSS function. Now, we don't want to actually run it here. We want it to call it. So we're going to remove. Uh, those parentheses, and then it'll call it and do it itself rather than us kind of manually running it here. So we're going to just copy this down, and essentially on each of these, we're just going to switch them out and say, all right, now let's do our JavaScript one. And this one we called JS Min, I believe. And then we're going to say, all right, let's optimize our images. And then we'll say, all right, let's do the Web P image. We do need to switch both of these out to this one is going to watch our S SRC folder for images. And remember, it's anything that has either a JPEG or a PNG image. And this one will be the same thing, except it'll watch inside our dist folder. Okay, so now this is going to run our watch task whenever anything changes in any of these folders. It will call these functions that we wrote earlier. All right, the last thing to do is to actually create a default gulp task. This will allow us to just type gulp in the terminal and everything should run automatically. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come down here and say exports.default series. And again, we're pulling series from gulp itself, which is one of those uh, things we grab from gulp at the very beginning, the first line. And we're going to just pass in, first of all, all of these uh, functions, kind of one after the other. 
Now, I've got this clipboard manager that will just allow me to kind of run them one after the other in the order that I uh, copy them. So that's what all, all that is there. Once those are done, so the, as soon as we type gulp, it's going to run all four of those just to make sure everything's kind of up to date. Then we'll type in our watch task. And in each of these, we don't want to run it. We want to make the default run it. So we're going to remove the parentheses on all of those. So what we're doing is whenever we type gulp, it's going to just start by running all four of our functions automatically, then running our watch task, which will then perpetually run every time anything changes in one of these folders. All right, so we've done everything except for run gulp itself. We've got one more thing we'll, we'll do in a moment here, but let's see, first of all, if we've done everything correctly. If you just type gulp, it should just start running all of those things. And notice what it did. First of all, it said, hey, we're going to run your default gulp. That's this. And like we mentioned, one after the other, it just runs all of our um, functions. So compile CSS tells us how long it took. JSMen tells us how long it took. Optimize images tells us how many it did, how much it saved. Optimize image, WebP image, all those. Then it says, okay, now we're ready to watch the gulp task. This WebP image took a little bit of time, and that's okay. You'll notice, too, that over here, it actually created this images folder and inside here are these optimized jpegs with a webp and i don't have any pngs in here but you get the point um, css right here the javascript is minified and right over this way so actually if we come down here you'll notice this javascript file here is minified if we use the same one pull it up over this way you'll see this is not minified uh, the images are a little more difficult to tell but let's focus on the css because that's pretty easy to see you see here it's minified, and um, if we pull up the SCSS file over here, it's not minified. Now, you may have noticed something, and that is that there are no auto prefixers on here. And even though we have this plugin running, it's not working because you actually have to pass in one other variable. Now, you can do this in a few ways. You can add it up here in your actual package.json file, or you can come back to your gulp file. We'll need to stop this gulp task so that what we're doing will actually have an effect. And I'm going to come all the way back up to my compile CSS. And we'll come in here, and what we'll do is just add last two versions. This will tell the auto prefixer how many versions it should do backwards compatibility for. So if we come back in here and just hit the up arrow to run the most recent command and hit return, it should now, if we open the CSS file again, I guess we already had it over that way, it should add a bunch of WebKit um, auto prefixers. So like WebKit box sizing, WebKit box shadow, all these things that were no longer, weren't there before by passing in that variable to, or that parameter to that function we wrote for minifying our SCSS. It now adds all of those for us. Now here's the cool thing. When it comes to actually uh, running, when it comes to actually using the images, now you can update your markup your index.html file over here to reflect that kind of more modern look. So you'll see here right now I just have normal image tags, but we can replace these now with picture tags. All right, so give me just a moment. I'm going to convert all these image tags to picture tags, and then I'll be right back. All right, we are back. And what I did is I just added all of these as picture tags. And the way WebP images work is you can set this SRC set, and you can actually set multiple ones even provide some that are like mobile friendly and um, uh, I, I just kind of kept it as basic as I could here. We just have the WebP image that says, hey, try to load this one and uh, it'll be significantly smaller than our JPEG. Otherwise, load this JPEG. You'll notice over here, all of these images are showing up just as you'd expect. So that's how I use Gulp in my production sites. I create this Gulp file that does everything for me and then I can just focus on writing SCSS, dropping images in that uh, SRC images folder, writing my JavaScript there. Everything gets minified. Everything gets in the right place. And I don't have to f fiddle around with moving files and making sure everything gets minified properly. I just type gulp and everything happens for me. So hopefully it was helpful for you and uh, was clear enough to understand kind of the steps of what we did. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help however I can. Thanks so much and happy coding.